Yo, family, how you doing? It's your brother, Vladimir Deez. I was listening to um, uh, Lisa Cabrera talking about this Christopher Corker thing. And um, she made a statement. She said, if it's not an emergency, then you shouldn't be calling the police. And that hit my mind because as... You know, a person who has read through the uh, ISIS papers, Francis Chris Welsing's wonderful text, which I wish, you know, they, um, she continued to write, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> she continued to write, and um, the ISIS papers came out in the 70s. She actually continued to write from that point onward onto her death. Um, I wish they'd release a volume two of it because she kept doing her work. She kept doing her work and I'd love to see her other papers published for the public consumption. That said, um, the lessons that she gave should have informed us about one key aspect of all of these incidences. This is an emergency. This is an emergency. Non-white people are about to take uh, the position of minor of my or ma uh, of majority in this country. We have always been a majority in the world, but European Americans have been able to. <clears throat> lie to themselves about that fact because they went on a murderous rampage and killed many of us and then they were able to do this cognitive dissidence allowing themselves to move away from that murder uh, that murdering spree and to say well you know we were just always the majority here we didn't have to do anything underhanded we didn't have to murder a bunch of people. We didn't have to bring more Europeans here to dilute the population, which then led to another series of murders. We didn't have to um, scare black people into submittance by um, by uh, Jim Crow means and by lynchings and by the like. We didn't have to burn down dozens of black communities over the course of three or four years. Um, to stop them from economically challenging us and, in many instances, economically outpacing us. We didn't have to do any of those things. We didn't have to create um, desolate black communities by running huge freeways through the middle of their business centers. <clears throat> we didn't have to do that. We didn't have to um, dump $120 billion into white housing while we while we tore down their homes and decimated their communities and only poured in $2 billion from a federal level, not to mention what was done at a state level or regional level. Um, you know, today progressives like to talk about the whole federal government, you know, creating segregation, when in reality, it was all three levels. We didn't have to do that. That's their cognitive dissidence. We didn't have to pour Mil uh, billions of dollars into the GI fund, allowing white people to take full advantage of it and blocking most blacks who actually fought for this country from getting those uh, getting those benefits. We didn't have to do that. That's the cognitive dissidence talking. <clears throat> we didn't create white only communities. And then while we were decimating black communities, we didn't have to stop them from moving into those communities as we were decimating their communities. We didn't have to do that. That's that's the cognitive dissidence. That's the cognitive dissidence. So now that the balance is being overturned. And ladies and gentlemen, this is one reason why, and I... I want you to understand this because this isn't about hate, but I realize this. This is one of the reasons why European Americans are big on this Latin Hispanics in. From the standpoint of people, do you realize there is no such thing as a goddamn Hispanic? There is no such thing as a Hispanic. A Hispanic is just like a Negro. It's a created mechanism. It's a created spirit. It's a creative possessive spirit. 
what they call Hispanic is a Catholic infused indigenous person who believes that they are more white than they are non-white just like a Negro on the non-black sense believed that they were more white than they were non-white the Hispanic is infused with that European possessive spirit that <clears throat> Amos Wilson talked about that's why they want the Hispanics here it isn't because of of um, of um, equality and fairness and all that other nonsense it's because these light-skinned people these light-skinned people just like the reason why they're inviting all these Asians in here because these light-skinned people help to dilute the dark population help them to believe through through marriage mainly that they are still the majority here and that they are still the majority on the planet even if you count it every light-skinned Asian every light-skinned South American every light-skinned all over the dang world understand something the majority population on this planet is either paper brown paper uh, what was it the paper bag paper brown bag or darker and especially in India which is quickly becoming um, as as uh, uh, black agenda report was talking about or radio was talking about recently India is quickly ascending to the most populous country in the world what they're not telling you though is that behind India <clears throat> the most uh, and by the way one of the youngest countries uh, and the quickest growing uh, from a population standpoint is Nigeria if, I think it's Nigeria it's either Nigeria or Kenya but I want to say it's Nigeria and um, uh, in the next couple of decades they're going to reach a billion people Africa will be the most populous uh, continent a little bit after mid-century which again jibes with prophecy which I'm not I'm not gonna dive into a lot I guess but um, to Mr. Corker uh, to what happened with him uh, this is an emergency <clears throat> this is an emergency and you know check out when you watch that video family because this isn't really about dissecting the video but when you watch that video listen to what that brother said he was wearing pink polo blah 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 family and to much love to that brother but you know this whole feminizing of black men has to stop this whole feminizing of black men has to stop because you know this guy you know uh what was it, Wesley Michael? Um, he he was absolutely wrong, but it was kind of ironic. He was trying to tell this guy, you know, who he is, what he is, software engineer, um, you know, pink polo, blah blah blah. And I'm thinking to myself, you understand, this guy doesn't give a damn. You're still a nigger, right? You get that, right? You can wear as much pink as you want. You can wear as much pink as you want. Pink is a female's color, family. It is a female's color. Oh, well, it's also it's also cancer's color. No. Cancer doesn't have a color. That was assigned to it by, by the society. And pink is a female color. You have a baby. You have two babies. One is one is dressed in light blue, one is dressed in pink. Which one do you think is going to be the girl? We have to stop this effeminizing of ourselves. These people don't give a damn. You could be as effeminate as you want to be. You're still a nigga. And that's a, that's a fact. That is a fact. If we look at what uh, Francis Cress Welsing's work, you know, this effeminization of black men isn't hard to see. They fear our genetic material, 
so they want to make us as feminine as possible. They fear our genetic material, so they want to make us as feminine as possible because we become so feminized that we don't even connect to our manhood. Guess what happens? Two things happen, actually. On the one hand, some of us become gay and we take our genetics right out of competition. Hear what I just said. Some of us become gay and take our genetics right out of competition. The second thing that happens, and this is the more important one, this goes to something that Cynthia G. I, I have so many problems with that woman. It's hard to listen to her a lot of times. But one of the concepts that she continuously harps on, and I'm starting to understand it even more and more, is the idea of the beta male versus the alpha male. The second thing that happens is our energy becomes twisted. It becomes reversed. It becomes inverted. And we become, like she said, a beta male. So then when we lay down and we have children, because our energy goes into um, us producing children, when we lay down and we have children, family, what happens? Our children come out and they are almost hollow from the beginning. They're not connected to the soul of the uh, of our of our ancestors because we didn't have the strength enough to to uh, build that cord to the past and to the future in them. That's an energy concept. And then for most of us, when we become beta, we don't even seek black women unless they're beta. So then that really did that that completely cuts off the child and periodically the child will still come out connected to the ancestors. But um that cuts off the child from the ancestors. Most beta mouths though end up with white women. And a lot of white women look for those beta males. I know people don't like to hear that. I know right now of of several men who are with white women and the only reason why those white women are with them is because they are beta males and they can impose their energy onto whatever seed is planted in their womb you can see it see if you learn if you learn how to see because a lot of people think oh well you know you're talking about white people man you must hate white people you know blah 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 this ain't about hate this is about telling the truth this is about telling the truth and I'm not playing the game, and I tell this to all of my white friends, too. I don't play this game where I'm going to critique white people and say, but not all. No, I ain't feeding your ego like that. To hell with your ego. If you believe that I'm talking about you, then guess what? I'm probably talking about you. Many of the guys, when they lay down with these <clears throat> white women, what happens <clears throat> is that their energy, their vibratory frequency is so low See, the vibratory frequency of black people is so high on this level because we are supposed to be able to create like that. That's who we are. So um, what, what has been happening through our music, through our culture over the past 40 years is they have been slowly stepping our energy down so that when we have babies with white people, before when we used to have babies with white people, the reason why they hated it was because those babies would always come out, well, not always, but like 98% of the time would come out with a black vibrational frequency. They figured out sometime in the 60s, maybe even as far back as the 30s, how to step down a person's vibratory frequency. And so they have been utilizing that. They have been utilizing what they learned, which is going to get them in massive trouble in the next two or three decades because they never understood what our vibratory frequency was about. But um, what they have learned, they have been using it to step down our vibratory frequency. And so uh, the reason why they did that is to allow for their seed, for their genetic imprintation to be carried on to the next generation, particularly as 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 that genetic material gets twisted up with black genetic material. They wanted to be able to neutralize the black genetic signature that imprints um, our energy form onto the next generation, no matter who we sleep with. Because it is us who runs the evolutionary show on this planet. They wanted to neutralize that. So this effeminization of black men is essentially the lowest level of the act 
of the active part of that energy. So what they want to, to kind of bring this home for you is um, they really literally want us to breed ourselves out of out of existence. So sleep with as many white women as you want. That's fine. See, before you used to run that. Now we didn't got your energy down to a point where guess what? You don't run that no more. She's going to be passing on her lineage to the next generation, not you. Not you. So that is, um, th that's what's what's kind of going on. Um, Christopher Corker, when he made that call, though, he doesn't know he doesn't know this. He just knows that black man there. I'm scared because of you know genetic material, as Francis Cress Welsing taught us, and I'm calling the cops because all this other stuff. You know, my people losing our um, majority status. My fear for the 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 uh, future of my son, you know, the fact that black people are going to be taking over this country. Hear me when I say that, family. Black people are going to be taking over this country. Black people are going to be taking over this country. Black people are going to be taking over this country. Black people are going to be taking over this world. I ain't lying. Black people taking over the world, and they know it. And they know it. A couple of years ago. 2015, late 2015, in fact, New York Times, Washington Journal, or no, Wall Street Journal, I'm sorry, um, and maybe even a Wall Street Post, but I know definitely New York Times and um, in the Washington, in the Wall Street Journal, uh, they ran uh, multiple page stories, multiple page stories, talking about the future demographics of the planet, the future demographics of the planet and i'm not sure if i can get to it right now let me go and see sorry family i don't know where it is but um <clears throat> uh they did this this uh, there was a series of articles on the future demographics of both the country and the world and these were large large articles they were not small. Um, many of them were multiple newspaper uh, pages, um, two or more, and um, often included large pa uh, pictures. Uh, one of the one that I was really looking for, the one that I always think of when I'm when I when I talk about this, is um, uh, it was a front page. I don't know if it was front page of the paper or front page of the section, but um, it included these large pictures. I mean tiny pictures technically but for the size of newspaper large pictures and um uh there were i want to say 20 of them and they were individual faces of people and the majority when i say majority i'm probably talking 75 percent of the of, of them were colors were colored they were black black or brown they were black or brown. Even the Asian ones mostly had brown to them. So, and this was in 2015. Um, I see the connection between Donald Trump and those those uh, those those articles, and I see that um, a lot of the issues that white people are ducking today, if we could say it that way. Um, and that white people are responding to today have to do with that reality that they are losing this notion, this inner notion, because this, it, it's always been a lie. M Malcolm X exposed it. Um, this inner notion that they were somehow spectacular, that they were somehow, you know, greater than us, that they were more numerous than us. They never have been more numerous than us, except for the time when they were going around the world and murdering a bunch of us. But even then, they were not more numerous to, than us. <clears throat> take Europe, take Asia, take wherever white people have pushed their way into, they still aren't more numerous than us. And so to this Mr. Corker, to all of these people who are making these phone calls, they are, there's a psychological need to do so because there is an emergency. And that emergency is that 
they're re they're resuming their minority status now as i was talking about and there will be a time in the future when i'll do a greater video on um this concept of energy and sex and baby making and all that good stuff but um we we are losing our vibratory frequency allowing them to transport their 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 uh personality traits onto our children and we have to stop that we really do and we have to come back to not to 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 being proudly masculine um quickly last thing that i want to say i was on the bus <clears throat> a couple of weeks ago and there was this little uh, child acting up and um uh he which by the way i gotta tell you his mother was white um he had definitely some color in him and she had his hair put up and when i was a kid the way that his hair was worn was that was a woman's way of wearing her hair that was a um a baby girl's way of wearing her hair it was not a, a male child's way of wearing his hair so um i was uh, watching this kid and he was kind of acting up and um, he was screaming a little bit and what have you so <laughs> I swear I like channeled my dad and I go hey you know with that deep deep voice you know you anyone who's had who has an old-fashioned father they know about this um, deep hey type of voice um, I can't do it here because it's not you know it's it's a it's it's not the right circumstance. They also know about the look. You know, you can say a thousand words in a look, and you know, if you had that type of father who could cut their eyes at you, and you know, oh, he didn't got to that end. Let me stop. And I did that. Um, I did it. I mean, it came so natural to me. It kind of shocked me. You know, now I don't have kids, family. I don't have kids, but um. It shocked me and he the child looked up at me and I literally saw the light come on in his eye I, I saw the light click in his eyes and he looked up at me and he kind of looked at me like oh wait a minute you care you care literally that was the look on this child's face you care oh man and so uh, he went to do it again and I did exactly the same thing. And I said, all right, now that's enough. I go, there is no reason for you acting that way. And he looked at me again, like, oh, you care. All right, you care. And then I started talking to him because, you know, he was, he, he didn't speak, you know, yet very well, which kind of was shocking because. He was young, but he wasn't that young. He looked to be about two-ish. And so I figured he'd be saying a lot more words than he was. But um, I uh, I started just talking with him. And he calmed down immediately. I mean, actually, technically, he didn't calm down immediately. He kept trying to get up from his mom and come closer to me. And I said to her, um, after misidentifying him as a female first, I said, you need to get him around other men. And I said, you need to get him around black men. I said, he's a black child. He needs to be around black men. And she kind of gave me this look. And I'm like, you can hate it if you want to, but you decided to sleep with a person with color. That child is connected to the black ancestry. That's why he responded to me. You need to get him around black men. You can put him around white men all you want, but he ain't going to respond the same because they're different. And I said this on a bus with white people on it. See, family, here's the difference between me and most 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 black people. I don't care about the about the uh, uh, the sensitivities of white people. I don't anymore because they're ruining a generation because they are too damn stupid to raise these children correctly. And they are effing this generation up because they want to believe that if 
they just do anything to these children that they're going to be fine. When in reality, no, you have to raise them a specific way. I'm tired of it. So, yes, I give them the truth. And she didn't she didn't like the truth. I didn't care. I straight up told her before I left, if you love your child, this is what you will do. It ain't about you. Stop being so selfish. And that's something else that I'll have to talk about in the future. A lot of these women, a lot of these white women wanted Barack Obama babies. It was about a toy. It was about a toy. They didn't actually want to raise them. They just wanted to play house. I mean, it's... Anyway, so... Um, I realized then that these young kids... Um, Unless black men stepped up for a lot of these mulatto children, they're going to come out messed up. They're going to come out messed up. They will come out messed up. All right, question, comments, concerns, leave them below. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.